Okay. Audio check, check, check. Audio check. All right, here it goes, beginning of Into the Gregorverse versus Mosaic Made. We like Dota, season 2020, patch 7.28, Mistwoods. Uh, game one. So I am going to try and emphasize all the new patch as much as possible. We'll see if this game ever loads, though. <whistles> Welcome to the Gregorverse chooses Radiant, and Mosaic May will take second pick. See how well this works out for him. It's going to be a zany, zany game. No Hoodwink. Hoodwink bad. No Captain's Mode for Hoodwink. Okay. Mosaic made. Still haven't quite got their whole banner up there, but it's okay. It's a little difficult to do that. I've done some banner editing myself. Jim is the drafting. Drafting captain for into the Gregorverse, bans out Phantom Lancer. Meanwhile, Mosaic made Alien, bans out Oracle. Baby Buck Joy, stand in for Mosaic made. I believe she and uh, Joji are pretty good friends. Love the stars, love the moon. Alchemist gets banned. Ooh, big trash kind. 
All right, Snapfire. First pick. So, patch notes for Snapfire. We'll start with Aghanim Shard ability. Units in point blank range of Scatter Blast will be knocked back 250 units. Take 125 extra damage and be stunned for 1.5 seconds. Fire Snap Cookie mana cost increased from 100 to 110. Little Shudder mana cost reduced from 90 to 75, 80, 85, 90. Gobble Up now has a 150 mana cost. Gobble Up Spit Out no longer has 150 mana cost. Gobble Up can now target special units like Golem, Spirit Bear, etc. Gobble Up Impact Damage changed from 400 to match the current glob values on your ultimate, 60, 240, 320. Then to counter, we've got Darkseer. One second. He got a Sceptery work. Iron Shell Radius increased from 250 to 275. Level 15 talent changed from Iron Shell provides 350 max health to plus 6 armor. Level 20 talent changed from plus 8 armor to plus 1 second wall of replica slow. Sceptery War causes Iron Shell to have two charges, increases duration by 20 seconds, and provides 350 health. That's quite a buff. Well, that's really good Scepter buff anyways. Aghanim's Shard ability. Normal Punch grants Normal Punch. Passive cooldown attack causes your next attack on a hero to knock an illusion out of them and stun them for two seconds. By the way, this was highly inspired by the uh, one of the Avengers movies uh, where um, Doctor Strange, the Ancient One, punches people to knock their souls out of their bodies and then into the astral plane. And then sometimes she interviews them. She's really not, usually not doing a lot of damage to them and doing that. Uh, next attack on a hero to knock an illusion out of them and stun them for up to two seconds. Knock back for 350 distance and deal 250 damage based on how far you've moved in the past three seconds. Cooldown 14, max power is after 1500 distance moved. Illusions last for five seconds. We've got Spirit Breaker. Another strike cooldown reduced from 180, 60 to 90, 70, 50. That looks like it's minus 10 seconds across the board. Charge of Darkness Scepter cooldown reduced from 6 to 7. Oh, increased. Charge of Darkness Scepter movement bonus increased from plus 100 to plus 175. Aghanim's Shard ability causes another strike to have a cast delay rather than a cast time. Deal 260. Deal 200 extra damage and apply break for 4 seconds. You are spell immune during the cast delay. Tuscarino. Walrus Kick now grants. Walrus Kick now targets a direction and kicks the closest enemy unit you wish within 250 radius. Prioritizes heroes. Level 25 talent increased from minus 8 seconds snowball cooldown to minus 10 seconds. Aghanim's Shard ability, Frozen Sigil, grants Frozen Sigil, summons a flying sigil that slows enemy attack by minus 30 and movement speed by minus 20%. Enemies within 650 radius, last 25 seconds, cooldown 30, mana cost 100. So this is his old skill brought back, the Sigil. Uh, then we've got Vengeful Spirit. Base Intelligence increased from 17 to 19. Magic Missile Cast Range increased from 550 to 575, 600, 625, and 650. Oh, magic Missile has 
Scaling cast range, magic missile projectile speed increases from 900 to 1350. Vengeance Aura no longer increases attack range or primary attribute. Vengeance Aura no longer has an illusion of death mechanics. Vengeance Aura now increases base attack damage by 2, 8, 16, 32%. Scepter we work. Upon death creates a strong illusion of you that you can cast all your spells and deals 100% damage and takes 100% damage. Illusions have 30% movement speed bonus. If the illusion is alive, when you respawn, you will take its place. XP earned by your illusion is given to your hero. Two life hero again. With the scepter, nether swap no longer has charges. Nether swap cooldown reduced from 90... 80, 70, 2, 60, 45, 30. Nether swap cast range increased from 700, 850, 1000 to 800, 950, 1, 1100. Level 20 talent changed from plus 100 vengeance aura attack range to plus 125 cast range. Level 25 talent changed from Vengeance Aura Illusions cast spells for 16% Vengeance Aura base damage. Wave of Terror. Wave of Terror now steals 25% of the enemy hero base damage and grants it to you as base damage for the debuff duration. Slark Nudo. Shadow Dance cooldown reduced from 80, 70, 62, 80, 65, 50. Pound Scepter range increased from 1100 to 1200. Level 10 talent increased from plus 6 agility to plus 7. Aghanim's Shard ability, Fish Bay, grants Fish Bay, can throw it on enemies to reduce their movement speed by 30% and grant you 2 sight over them for 4 seconds. If you pounce an enemy during that time, you will be rewarded with 50 attack speed for the duration of pounce. Cast range 1100, mana cost 100, cooldown 20%. Cooldown 20. More fling. Level 25 talent changed from plus 3, set three multi shot adaptive strike to plus 30 strength. Aghanim Shard Ability, Adaptive Strike, Agility. Causes Adaptive Strike to have plus one multi-shot and removes a three-second shard. Shared cooldown between the two different abilities prioritizes enemy heroes. Not a lot of changes for Morphling. Kunka, Kunka. Skiddly do. Intelligence gain from 1.5 to 1.8. Ghost Ship Rum movement speed increased from 10 to 12%. Base all 3 gen increased from 0 to 0 0.25. Level 10 talent change from plus 6 AMA to plus 150 cast range. Uh, level 20 talent for Kunkka. Level 20 talent increases increased from plus 18 strength to plus 20. Level 25 talent increased from plus 110% Tidebringer Cleave to plus 140%. Sorry, guys. Missed that one. I'm going to miss a lot of other ones, too. Aghanim's Shard Ability, Tidal Wave, New Ability, grants Tidal Wave, releases a wave toward the target direction that deals 225 damage and drags non-interrupting enemies along it for 600 range over 1.25 seconds. The wave spawns 600 units behind you and travels 1400 distance in front of you, has 700 speed and 750 radius, cooldown 16, mana cost 150.
Which doctor are you? Aghanim Shard ability. Grants Voodoo Switch. Grants Voodoo Switcheroo. Because which doctor are you? Turns you into a Death Ward for two seconds. Death Ward has minus has minus 30 attack speed. You are hidden and vulnerable during this time. Cooldown 70 mana cost 250. And we're almost there. On T Mage. Got a scepter rework. Mana break burn reduced from 1, 2, 3, 4% to 1, 1.8, 2.6, 3.4%. Level 15 talent changed from plus 12 agility to plus 8 armor. Level 15 talent reduced from 325 blink cast range to plus 300. Level 20 talent changed from blink uncontrollable illusion to plus 0.1 mana void multiplier. Scepter rework now grants blink fragment. Blinks an illusion at the target enemy location and attacks them for 7 seconds. Uses blink cast range. Illusion cannot be controlled. Deals 50% damage. Takes 250%. Cast and counter spell also casts it on the fragment illusion. Cooldown 20, mana cost 50. Item shard ability, poor Titus. Poor Titus. Item shard ab ability, counter spell upgrade. Successful counter spell creates an illusion attacking the caster for 5 seconds, removes counter spell mana cost. Well, looks like we might actually have to uh, come cast the game now. Okay, even kills and deaths. I like this. This, this looks pretty competitive here. Double kill. Double kill. Gotta take a look at this, I guess. Calling baits are quite popular with Radiant Team. Sorry, getting a uh Oh getting pwned by the witch doctor. First boots goes to love the stars, love the moon. Let's, let's see how he does. Oh, we also need to um, look at some new items. What is this? Fluffy hat? Who likes fluffy hats? 125 hell. It's winter time. Gotta stay warm, boys. Gotta keep those ears from freezing. 
especially if you're up in Canada or one of those places where that feel it freeze your tail off. What else do we've got? We've got Oh look at this, we got Orb of Corrosion. Hundred fifty health and or twenty five gold cost, dealing three damage per second, reducing armor by three, and slowing movement by thirteen percent of the equipped hero is melee or four percent if they're arranged. Uh oh. Uh oh. Somebody's getting charged, but the more important thing is Orb of Venom and Blightstone were combined with Fluffy Hat into a single item. Positions for everywhere. Go wild. What an item. Falcon Blade. 1100 gold. Plus 150 health. Plus 1.6 mana regen. Plus 10 damage. Okay. Fluffy hat. Gotta love the fluffies. Blades of attack. Recipe cost. Let's see. This does a uh, plus one damage. Doubles the mana regen. Plus 25 health. What else do we got? We got, we got, we got. Which blade? Which blade are you? Blitz Knuckles, 35 attack speed, old item, no one cares about it anymore. Okay. Mix of offense and defense, and a little bit of stats, recipe costs, 600 gold. 2600, 35 attack speed, 12 intelligence, 6 armor, 300, plus 300 projectile speed. 9 second cooldown for the passive, causes your next attack to apply a poison for 3 seconds, slowing by 25% dealing 1x your intelligence as damage every second. It's for the smart cuckoos out there. Papa wants to make me cast a game by creating action. I say no, thank you. Joji also wants to make me cast a game. So does Top Lane. Why can't we just be friends and read patch notes, guys? Nice. It's gonna be probably a double kill for uh yep, 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 yep. Max blank, single point mana break, counter spell, and use the mana void. So Gleipnir, 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 plus 30 damage, Six, oh, that's an expensive item, nobody's going to care about it, it costs 6,150 gold, but anyways, Gleipnir, 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 Gleipnir. 30 damage, 20 intelligence, 12 strength, 12 agility, active, eternal chains, 200 mana costs, 18 second cooldown, roots all enemies in a target, 200, four, target 450 radius for 2 seconds, and deals 220 damage, range 1100, passive, chain lightning, grants 30% chance on attack to release a bolt of electricity that leaps between 4 targets 
within 650 radius, dealing 160 magic damage to each lightning proc pierces evasion. Maelstrom builds into something besides Mjolnir. Atos is not a dead item anymore. It's a mere 700 gold. Wind waka walks on the wind. Wind stucka walks on the chin. Windwalker, 7,125 7, gold, plus 15 movement speed, plus 6 mana regen, plus 35 intelligence. Active Cyclone, 175 mana cost, 23 second cooldown. Sweeps the target up in unit and Sweeps the target unit up into a Cyclone, making them invulnerable for 2.5 seconds. Cyclone can be cast on yourself, enemy units, or allied units. Enemy units take 50 magical damage upon landing. Range 575. Dispel type, basic dispel. Yule Scepter, no longer dead. What? What? This item really need a buff? Hello? Yule Scepter? Anybody? Mystic Staff? It's fine. Nobody needed more Mystic Staffs or anything. Only Silencer liked Mystic Staff that much. Recipe, Windwalker, 1600 recipe cost. Combine those two items. Try and get that Ultra Intelligence. Things are happening. More things happen. Radiant are doing well. They come out on top. For now. Fairies trinket. Eh, we're not talking about fairies right now. Well, I suppose since he's wearing it. See, plus 100 health, 5% spell damage, plus 5% mana cost reduction. Let's see, does it affect his cosmetics? Fairy's Trinket. Well, I don't see the cosmetic item on him anywhere. More flank. Eternal Shroud costs 3,250 gold, 20% magic resistance, 8.5% HP, HP regeneration, 20% spell life steal for heroes, 4% spell life steal on creeps. Morphling first to fall. Ash and Dairy not doing too well either. Eternal Shroud. 
Active Shroud, 50 mana cost, 60 second cooldown, creates a spell shield that absorbs up to 4 magic da magical damage, converting the damage taken into mana lasts 12 seconds. the Mask, out of Defiance, and Eternal Shroud, well, that's a cheap recipe, 1100 gold. Bargain Bin deals, guys. Pick this one up at a second hand shop. Look for this item on resale. Mage Slayer, 3,400 gold. 20% magic resistance, 20 agility, 20 damage. Twenty percent, twenty agility, twenty damage. Passive Mage Slayer places a debuff when you attack an enemy, causing them to do thirty-five percent less spell damage for four point for four seconds. No cooldown. Cloak. Play of Alacrity. Claymore. Um, mage Slayer. Anti Mage. Girl, you need to reconsider your item build. Auntie Mage. Auntie Mage, you want to kill your mages. Overwhelming blink, 6,800. Oh, we're getting cheap items now. 6,800 gold, plus 25 strength. Active overwhelming blink, 15 second cooldown. Teleport to a targeted point up to 1,200 units away. After teleportation, all enemies at 800 AA have 50% movement speed slow and 50 attack speed slow for 6 seconds and take damage equal to 200 plus 100% of your strength. Overwhelming blink cannot be used for 3 seconds after taking. Damage from an enemy hero or Roshan. Swift Arena Blink. Plus 25 agility, active Swift Blink. Same, it's starting to look the same as Overwhelming Blink. By the way, one for each attribute. Uh, same cooldown. After teleportation, you gain 30% phase movement for plus 40 attack speed and plus 40 attack damage for 6 seconds. Swift Blink cannot be used for 3 seconds after taking damage from an enemy hero or Roshan. We're getting there, boys. We're getting there. Okay. 25 intelligence. Which are the rest of the stuff? Okay. After teleportation, you gain 25% ability cooldown reduction and 50% cast point reduction for 6 seconds. The players want to play. The patch readers want to read patch notes. It's looking fine. It's looking pretty good for Gregorverse. It looks like a win for Gregorverse. Oh. Oh, not all the way though. But we got this problem. After teleportation, you gain twenty five percent ability cooldown reduction and fifty percent cast point reduction for six seconds. We've got Overwhelming, Swift, and Arcane Blinks now. So don't let your Blink Dagger go to waste. Upgrade that bad boy. Teleport 
tell you, Gregor versus, they really want to, they want to win this game. You might think they were just messing around, but nope, they want to win. Quick silver amulet. Five percent movement speed. Oh, let's do this, I guess. Five percent movement speed, plus ten attack speed, thirty percent attack animation speed, plus thirty attack projectile speed, passive quick silver grants you a bonus twenty five. Gains you bonus five percent movement speed and fifteen attack speed anytime one of your abilities are on cooldown. Okay. Hey Titus, pro tip. Pick up a neutral item. Ball whip, three percent, three HP regeneration, three mana regen. Active whip, twelve second cooldown. Grants sixteen percent movement speed when cast on allies and slows by sixteen percent when cast on enemies. Five second cooldown. For the last five seconds. Last five seconds. So if it gets there, what items do we have here? Elven tunic, tier three, plus twenty six attack speed. 16% evasion, plus 8% movement speed. Even simple items of elven make seem imbued with inexplicable cool efficacy. And we got a uh, Aghanim's charge, Aghanim's shard. I wonder where the overview is to see who's got shards. Alti Mage has a shard. The alien does not have a shard. Darkseer has a shard. Finch does not have a shard. Childers does not have a shard. Titus does not have a shard. Slark does not have a shard. Witch Doctor does not have a shard. They do got the kills, some. Oh yeah, in the sense that everybody's dying. Trousers, you're all alone. You're all alone, trousers. He's dead, Jim. And that's all she wrote. GG out, guys. GG out now. Okay. So in the end, carries carried for Mosaic Maid. I think. Is that what happened? Probably decent description. It's important is we got to read patch notes.
It's not the friends we made along the way, it's the patch notes we read to ourselves.